today we are looking at my singing monsters secrets and I am joined none other than by Dave Kerr and Maggie. Do you want to say hi guys? Hi, Hello. how are you doing Poke? I'm doing absolutely amazing. I can't tell you how much of an honour it is to have you guys here today. You've been a massive inspiration all the way through my entire life and it's a huge honour guys. Oh, thank you so much. It's an honour for us too. I've been doing this for a long time as well so don't think it's just us. Oh, <laughs> We're excited to meet you as well. So the first question that I wanted to ask you guys is, what is the favorite monster you have ever voice acted? And if we could even have the honor, could we hear it? Oh, I personally would say Furcorn every time, just because that was the first one we animated. To me, it's the heart of what my singing monsters means. Maggie, what's yours? You could probably guess it, but definitely Pom Pom. <laughs> and I would be happy to do a demonstration of Pom Pom, but I can tell you a funny story. Is uh, We were donating some musical equipment to a classroom, and I was dropping it off, and the kids in the classroom asked me to do the Pom Pom voice. Oh, that's so sweet. And I warned them. I said, okay, my Pom Pom voice is my <laughs> loudest outdoor shouting voice so get ready for it and so we had to step back from the mic and turn down the gate all those things had to be done so that it didn't if we uh, do if you do it out. now you're gonna have to go over there yeah, I'll have to go to the back of the room if I'm going to do pom-pom. <laughs> we want to see it. We want to see it. Let me do it? Yeah. Okay. All right. Are you, you ready? Oh, we're ready, yeah. Okay, here we go. Hey, everybody. Hey, let's go. Hey. That's amazing. It's so there strange hearing all these voices coming out of you guys' mouths. It's it's like it's a whole of a new reality, and it just makes you realize this is real. Wow. And, I, and you want a little fur corn? Yes, we absolutely want to hear a fur corn. <laughs> la, 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 la. Okay, that was a little high, I think. Oh, my la, God. La, 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 la. I need a key. Yeah, it's a hard one because it's got a very small range. If I go too low, like, la, la, la. That's about the lowest note I can go in for a corn. The other ones, toe jammer, easier. Do -a, do, do -a, <laughs> do -a. That was That's so my natural fun. voice. The amount of memes I've put in my videos for toe jammer, it's some real man. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I think the pom pom's easy because I'm just bellowing. But yeah. for corn was, I remember it was really hard for Dave to do. It involved a pretty sore throat and using the falsetto and getting the falsetto well, it's, to it's sound getting so a clean was. Up. Yeah, it doing it right challenging. off the bat. It takes a while. And then once you get it going, you know, I can do it really loud, which is like Yostrich, which I could not oh, do. Oh, right yeah. Now. That is, Yostrich that is, is what the I favorite for. monster that you voice, Dave. Yeah. I'm going to let you yeah. into that. <laughs> so I want to know what is the deal with come on? What is this amazing word and why is it always there? We've not really seen many English lyrics, but come on, it's on most of the islands. Why do some of these islands have English lyrics? It's an invitation because we want people to well, join. Yeah. Yes, and it's an invitation to participate and to come along for the ride. Oh, that's so sweet. Maggie, that is the sweetest explanation ever. Every time I listen to Party Island or Tribal Island now, that's it. I'm going to be driving. Woo! <laughs> One of the fundamental things from the beginning was My Singing Monster was trying to make it about everybody, right? So always to me, it's more about the community than about the actual game, inviting everybody into it. So that's probably part of it subconsciously. But when, when I made it, it was just like, I don't know, it sounds good. <laughs> I think as well, a huge part of the concept of this is that the voices aren't perfect, that it's yeah. the kind of thing that everyone can do. And that was something that was yeah. really important right from the get-go, that these are not perfect voices. I mean, they have to be electronically treated for some of the effects because human voices can't do them. But essentially, it was to say anybody can yeah. do this. Well, that was one you of... don't have to be a rock star to be able to come for the ride and participate. Anybody can do this, and anybody can do this in their basement because yeah. that's where it was the all of our I mean, like yeah. some of them obviously are too hard, but majority I tried to keep in the, in the average vocal range and you know not too complicated. That was definitely a conscious decision there. That's awesome, guys. So tying into his lyric inspiration, we've got Galvana. Galvana loves to say "Rooty Toot" on Starhenge. Why does it say "Rooty Toot"? Because that's a monster as well. <laughs> Dave's face, right? <laughs> I don't know. I, a lot of these things, a lot of people ask me these questions and I can't even remember them. I'm like, I don't even know what, or what, why it was inspired. But I think a lot of times it's just fun to say. I'll just say things that are fun to say. And then you find out later, oh, that sounds like this. And that's not necessarily the nice. I'm like, no, it's not that. Cybop, I think, has some things that people think he's saying some things. I'm like, no, he's not. Sometimes it's just, it sounds fun. I don't know. My mom used to say root -a toot toot to me yeah. all the time when I was supposed to hurry up when I was a kid. So... Oh. Maybe she said it to you. Maybe she said, maybe I said it to you. Maybe, I, really did you, have you ever heard people it. saying root-a-toot-toot? -toot? 
a lot of times my conscious decisions were more about placement in the music. So like a ba hops, right? Whereas a do can sit underneath it. So it's a lot about finding the place. So there's a lot of what they're saying is almost thinking about what vocal instrument they are. Sometimes he wants a vocal sound that's more percussive, like yeah. a bop, bop, bop is more percussive, whereas ooh yeah. is not. And it's how it fits into the music at that point. Yeah, it's always fascinated me how you manage to intermingle all of these lyrics that all invoke these emotions. It just kind of shows your music is not about the vocals and that. I feel honestly like I can relate more to music that doesn't necessarily have it because I can make it my own. And I think as well, that's a big part of what My Singing Monsters is in the first place, isn't it? Oh, for mm -hmm. sure. I mean, there was a lot of debate, you know, so the wardrobe. That was something that I was quite hesitant about. So there's a couple of reasons behind that. One is we always put in little words here and there, you know, starting with Pom Pom. I think she was one of the first. I wanted to be accessible around the world. So doing the wordos as much as I love doing the lyrics there was a bit of hesitation of like is this gonna really just be for certain people it was hesitancy for sure i think yeah. starting at least without that I think starting that without words for sure the yeah. words did come a lot later so guys i want to ask how did you come up with as lord and savior the one that the community always is in awe about what box how did this idea spring into being <laughs> we we do all of these islands and then we do gold island and we're like people want more what do we do oh Oh yeah, we definitely wanted more. <laughs> you want it to be special. In order to make it special, you want to make people work for it. And so we're thinking like, what do we have to work with? And so it really became more of a problem to solve than it was. I came as like, okay, well, what about you putting these monsters in a box, right? And oh, I... well, here you go, guys. This is why we're box is so difficult. <laughs> well, I mean, if you work for it, you feel good about having it. It wasn't really about, you know, money grab or anything. It was more of just like, here's this ultimate kind of thing to say that, hey, you accomplished this to show off to your friends and say, I got a war box. Oh, I definitely did that as a kid. I'd go around the playground I had Wobox that way. I was like the celebrity in the playground when I had Wobox, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's the thing. It makes something hard to get. It becomes more valuable. And also, the other thing about Wobox was I always had the intent, because I made all the tempo at 140, to introduce dubstep at some point. The amount of duets you can put. You can put things from different islands, and sometimes they sound amazing. You know, just getting that dub stepped in there. I always knew I was going to, at some point, put it in there, because at the time it was popular. I like it because you can go half time and double time. Like, it's, really, it's a nice tempo. It's really nice. It feels like the most unique sound for some reason in the game, which is quite interesting. It's also really interesting how you pointed out the mechanics standpoint there. Lately, I've been feeling like there's not been as many new mechanics and hearing how you contemplated that at the beginning and seeing how those have been kind of really the grounding behind most of the game, even up to now, is quite revolutionary. When it comes down to the art, I had very little to do. There's music and mechanic drift. Then you get people like Maggie coming in to write, filling out these details, which I'm not that strong at myself. I do all the structure, like the architecture of everything. Same with like the dipsters which a lot of people don't like but i think they're cute <laughs> to me those were kind of neat because i just i'm like okay well we divided things into parts well what if i divide things into notes to me maybe the sound itself wasn't the best sound but to me it was just this neat showing i really wanted to show the audience whether kids or adults how music is made and that was kind of another way of me showing that that's really cool that tidbit behind showing how music was made i think that makes them make a lot more sense now and how they were structured i can tell you like the birth of the idea was when I was 17, 18. I was always fascinated in songs like Pachelbel's Canon and D, and you can hear that on Gold Island, yes. Musicals that had all these voices intertwining, and I was like, just my brain trying to go, how does this work? How does this, you know, learning uh, counterpoint and theory. Once I started learning all that stuff, I was like, this is amazing how this mathematics, all these different parts can actually sound good as a whole. And I became obsessed with that. Then I started doing sounds for Battlefield, gun sounds and everything. And I used to take the parts, bass part of a song, a guitar part, and put them in different things around the level so I'd walk around and hear the different parts and I'm like oh I gotta make a game that has something to do with where the user can walk around. Ooh the origins behind my singing monsters guys. It wasn't like a boom here's the idea it was this thing my whole life that I was like okay you know just that fascination I'm like you know what I think other people might be interested in this well, maybe not but th that was kind of the idea the, and just that fascination with as you get more stuff and you having control the loose control feeling like you're composing but you're not. That's so awesome hearing how you managed to crap that and how previous Battlefield experience might have actually been the very thing that influenced My Singing Monsters. Shooting games are definitely not my forte, so I don't know anything about it, but man, just that reference there, that's 
that's something that no one's going to ever consider, and here we are. <laughs> I did, did come this close to writing the music for Battlefield, by the way. So, a big question that I know everyone is going to be coming at me for if I don't ask this in the comments. Who is that loading screen monster? Who goes... I sung it, but... Oh, you sung that! I did, yeah. That's amazing! That does not sound like you. I think that might be the voice that... Wow! I wouldn't have expected you to do that one. It is a pitch shift. I did do a lot of pitch shifting because I was trying like how do I make my oh, voice because okay. didn't really have much to work with except I just grab people around me to do voices a lot of times when I'm writing I'm in a different world just whatever comes to mind that melody just came to my head and I just sang it and didn't really think about what creature is it what is it not you know and if you could give it a creature what creature would you give it though for some reason I picture it as quite small and cute I don't know what would you give it? a little centipede thing you think maybe something with a lot of legs and sections yeah hurry a furry centipede. There you go, big bloomable make. There we are. Furry centipede. <laughs> I, it's, it's funny, my niece just asked me that question too, about a week ago. She's just started getting the game. Yeah. Like, Why is everybody so obsessed with that? <laughs> Because no one knows where it is. I think there's all these sounds, but you have the monster, you know who it is. And then there's this random sound that no one knows and they hear it and it don't relate to anyone. So I think everyone does get that feeling. Something that I'm really interested in is in Dawn of Fire, there was an island and it was scrapped. What did you compose for this? I don't think there was anything. Quite often you'll put coming soon on things when you don't even know what you're going to do yet, but you just <laughs> want to let people know that you're working on something. The songs were composed pretty close to, like, it, it wasn't, except towards the end there, when I made a whole bunch at once, it was more like, go make a song, go put it out, make a song, put it out. It wasn't too much pre-planning. had the series of plan, cold, air, you know, like, I knew I had to do all those. But beyond that, it was play it by ear. Okay, we need a new island here. Oh, okay. New island there. That's pretty interesting. Okay. I know that Matt has given teasers towards what this island could be, so maybe it's just something that never really caught on all too much, but he definitely did have ideas from some stuff what he's said in the past. So maybe just something that we've not composed for. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, they probably have plans now for it. I have no idea. People keep on asking me for... <laughs> secrets out of me, like, I Stop don't know. asking about the stuff that it, we don't know about. <laughs> and then a lot of it can't know because there is nothing to know. The voices that we went in and did recently is they still have to figure out. You're not supposed to talk about that. No, um, that was the video. You saw the video, right? Yeah. Where Dave was yeah, in the yeah, studio. Yeah. So that's not a secret. The video is out there in the world. I know, but anyways. <laughs> But we don't Dave know what... like, we don't want to talk about this just in case. No. <laughs> like... Yeah, but we don't know what they're going to do yeah. with it. Oh, okay. Oh. So there were so many times in the past with voices as we didn't know what was going to come of it. <sighs> yeah. No. Well, this time around, maybe just because you weren't working there, you don't really know about it. That's that's quite yeah. interesting how that's they had you That's a good possibility, yes. That's interesting how they had you in to record a voice and you didn't know what it could be. How does that even work? I can't want to talk about too much, but it was very different experience. It was definitely me used to being do this, do that, and just, we came in very blind. Yeah, you usually being the mentor and then all of a sudden voicing. Can I just say, we are totally honored to have you guys come back. The voice actors right now, now, Punkleton, for example, it's just not the same. Booga, 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 booga. And then seeing you come back, I was screaming all over the place when I saw that video. Like, yay, Dave is back. <laughs> Maggie. We came back. I was there too. Mainly because of the community. To see all of these people just getting so excited about stuff like yourself. I mean, that's that's the reward in itself. It's just absolutely amazing to have you guys back. You are the roots of the game as far as I'm concerned. If you look through all the voice actors behind the game, if you look at the creators, if you, you are them, right? We are them. Amazing to have you back into that spectrum. Trim. This was Dave's baby. He came yeah. up with it. He made the pitch to the management. He had the idea. He had the whole thing yes, sorted I mean, in his mind but before it happened. we can't diminish. I mean, definitely from an art standpoint, Chris Elliott, Burge, and Ty Oh, were, yeah. You know, the, the three people. I really had nothing to do with the art. I, I would not take any credit for that. But I think just the way that all of us were together, it was such a synergistic experience. Like, everybody had their own area. It was, it was magical. You know when you're making something that's special. And even though at first it didn't feel like it was taking off, but we just kind of knew as a small group we all just pushed each other and we we're all very respectful of each other okay dave i've got to ask you something related to my channel it's a meme inside of the tutorial there's this bit where furcon goes the egg is incubating <laughs> 
And that has always been a funny moment on my channel. Can we hear that? Sure, sure. Yay, thank you, baby. <laughs> And I do remember that line. I, it was a controversial thing to put voice in there. And, I... <laughs> and that voice as well. I've never done any voice acting. And some people loved it and some people hated it. <laughs> it was so weird. Hi there, my name is Furcor. Oh my god, I love it. It's so funny, that bit. <laughs> I remember it kind of, it was, there was another character that said something like that. Oh. And it, I remember that specific line. There was definitely reason behind that. And I remember just picturing his face going, Yay, he's incubating. <laughs> That's great. Oh, my <laughs> oh, Dave, I love you. I love how into it you get with the voices. You can really see it come through with your voice work as well. So we're on a high now. We've got to get Maggie yep. okay. to join in. Yep. <laughs> All right. So this is another meme behind my channel. So when I was getting krill bait on Amber Island, it required blows and it became a meme that blows, he had to eat a lot of eggs. <laughs> <laughs> so I would like you to read this script. It's related to different memes on my channel, if you wouldn't okay. mind. Okay, sure. Look, there's an egg. Don't eat the egg, bloat. <laughs> Blow eats the egg anyway. Well, that explains why MBG always says feed my bloat. <laughs> Be careful with your football feet. There's an unfried pancake around here. Menacingly and cunningly looking down at the pancake. <laughs> yup, the legend of the unfried pancake is true. Oh, guys, you've made my memes count on now <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. You have made me so happy right now. <laughs> I can't tell you guys, when my viewers see this, they are gonna be so delighted. Yeah. We'll definitely oh, have to animate that. Well, that was super fun. So the Colossals are my favorite part of the law behind My Singing Monsters. And something really interesting is once we got a behind the scenes look at what a Colossal could look like. This is now in game two, and it's called the Spirit of Creation Decoration. Could you guys give us any kind of bits behind why this piece of full body colossal artwork was ever made. Chris made that. Now we always had an intention behind the clock. We didn't even have a name right at the beginning, but we knew that there was going to be something big. Like Ooh, was like, I like that. We had some ideas about what would happen, but I do think Chris made that quite early just to give an example of what could happen. Wow, just to see what has happened. That's awesome to know that you guys had ideas for the colossals. And even though you didn't quite know what that was, you knew you wanted it to be something. Oh, oh we talked was... about it a lot. Oh, yeah. Everybody was coming up with stories about what could happen with them yeah. and if they would wake up and how they would wake up. And, oh, I love yeah. that so oh, much. Right that from is the, something... Right from the get-go. Yeah, as a kid, I would always imagine the Colossals awakening. Obviously, it's happened now, but I'm still fascinated by that. That has to be one of the biggest things that you think of when I think of My Singing Monsters. Chris Elliott came up with the idea, because originally was working off an island, and Chris Elliott did come up with the idea idea of having it. There was a lot of, and this isn't official lore by any means, but there was a lot of talk about why is it a head? Is it kind of like inside out where there are creatures inside the head? Is it personalities? Is it, you know, there was never anything set in stone. We did kind of leave that open to interpretation because we found that everybody had different interpretations. Mm -hmm. So as well, let's just leave it at that. At least the beginning. I think now it's become a little more detailed. We tried to keep it a little more open-ended. Yeah, it's definitely become a lot more. It's this, it's that now. But yeah. mm -hmm. something to me, which I am still really fascinated by, and this is actually the update that I want to see most behind the game, is seeing the spirits of the Colossals as monsters. That is the biggest thing that I would love to see. Oh, there's definitely thoughts about Oh, we, yeah. That. When we were talking, one of those things that we thought, oh, it's like turtles all the way down, is that the Colossals, you know, it's monsters all the way down, and the Colossals will be on more heads and more heads. That was, that was one, one of, of the, the ideas that was around, tossed yeah. around. Oh, that makes a lot of sense, thinking back to, there's a decoration in Dawn of Fire that wasn't used, and it has the Colossal heads on top of one another. Really? 
Yeah. So, but there were so many people that talked about it and so many people had ideas. I don't think that anything was ever really settled on. Was no, and that's kind of the way that I like to keep things until we figured out we're going to do this. You leave something there. You know you're going to get back to it, but a lot of times you don't, and it becomes the challenge. You don't want to lock yourself, put yourself into a corner. As long as you know that you have enough, you kind of brainstorming, oh, well, there's tons of ideas here. We're going to be fine. Then you kind of, we'll figure that out later. Sometimes we did put ourselves into a corner, like when we <laughs> ran out of the island. You know, it's like, okay, we made five islands. We're like, that'll be the end of the game. And then it's like, okay, how do we make more islands? And then with Dawn of Fire, that's why we changed it. I do think it was a bit of too far of a change, but so that you can have as many islands as you want. I learned a lot with that. I think the crafting in Dawn of Fire was probably something I would, if I was to go back, I'd probably change it more back to the similar thing. But I think as a creator, it's hard not to try to reinvent things because you just want your, you get excited for about an idea. I think that's one thing I've learned is that sometimes just more, not the same, but maybe 75% the same, 25% new. I think with Donna Fire was like 50-50 and I think that was too far. So if you guys could add anything to My Singing Monsters, what would your update be? Colossals on top of Colossals would, would have been a cool idea or on top of bigger colossal oh man if they ever did anything like that that would be an amazing idea yeah i think everyone definitely wants that there's a lot of untapped potential they've been expanding on a lot of things recently like the mythicals all these old ideas but the colossals they're still there and they're not really done all that much with them, if you think about it. Yeah, I think kind of going bigger, like I kind of think in abstract terms, you know, just zooming out is something that can be done a little more. And zooming in would be kind of neat too. Maybe you could have some kind of micro My Singing Monster thing where you have one tile and you zoom in and all of a sudden there's these little tiny monsters. <laughs> That's such a fun living, idea, on, you know. living on Furcorn's yeah. head. Yeah, living in Furcorn's fur or something. I don't yeah. know, like there's, there's some fun things I think you could do there. I have to show you something because Something which has really astounded me inside of the community is my friend Rouse, they make island designs and they go and zoom out just like what you've said. So I want to show you guys one to see what you'd think. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> what are we looking at here? I, this is Val's design behind what a colossal's body could look like on the underneath because we never see it. We only oh, see the face. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. gorgeous. Oh, oh wow. Oh, I sure hope Chris has seen these. What do you think about these designs? Do you think this is something what we could see? I would love to do that. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> It would be amazing to show those to Chris Elliott and yeah. see uh, he would love them, I'm sure. How was the idea of the Wobblins made? And why was it related to Wobox? So I would think in very simple terms. So I'm thinking, okay, we've got the, the five islands that are across, right? They're, they're kind of sideways. They're all kind of equal. Then you have Gold Island, which I don't think it's heaven. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to be religious, but it was kind of esoteric kind of thing. Yeah. And you have Ethereal, which is even more further away. And then it was like, we've never gone down. And so to me, it was, let's do something really dark. Let's just see what happens. Because there was a lot of controversy, especially at the beginning. And Furcorn, like we went back and forth over this. I was always about, let's make it creepy. Oh, remember about and them having sharp the teeth, teeth? His sharp teeth, they were almost blunted. We had to fight for that. We got to have a little, they're monsters. They got to be a little scary. So Wobbling Island was attempt to see what happens if we go dark. It's kind of like a nightclub. It's supposed to be at night. And it is the sense of the underworld. And then we're like, okay, let's use a similar mechanic because we want these to be special as well and so that's where we're like well we'll use the wobox mechanic and then that turned into the thing and the actual title came from me just writing the music and going wake up the wobblins wake up the wobblins oh I, it just sounded cool and that line defined the title right speaking about wobblins and how they're quite electrical i'm gonna have to turn the light on now because it's got a pretty dark in here Wake up the weapons, wake up the weapons. Now that one ruined my voice. So let's talk about my childhood a little bit more. So I was really obsessed with My Muppet Show. So My Muppet Show's cancellation. How? Well, I guess the game just couldn't support itself is really, so it's not necessarily Disney or us. It's more just saying, okay, this isn't viable. It was really exciting. I know that you had a great time when oh. you went to, did you go to LA to I went record to them? Burbank, yeah. Or to Burbank to yes. record all the original Muppet voices, the it actors. Was... Did you actually get to meet them? Oh yeah, I directed them. I did all temp voices for them too. So me trying to do Fozzie and Miss Piggy and everything. And it was actually, I got one of the best compliments. I was like, your voice is pretty good. I'm like, oh, wow, thanks. 
This is from like Steve oh. Whitmire. Oh my goodness. I thought it was over the internet. I didn't know you actually went. Whoa. No, I no, went he there. Went. Rooftop is my absolute fave. Yeah, oh, rooftop was... is best. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so inside of Thumpage, there's a level called Ogrend, and we don't have any music for it. And it seems to have been canceled. Was there anything made for it? Now you're going way back. I don't think so. It that game, out. I was working on a golf course. For some reason, I was just sitting there and thinking about juggling and music. And I was thinking, what if you could juggle in time to the music? And then I started thinking, oh, what about those rhythm games? Just kind of all came together. Wow. It's been so cool hearing how all of these games came together from y'all. But I've got to ask Dave, what's next from Dave Kerr? Well, I think you've read the book. I certainly have. Go on then. Do you want to tell everyone about it? Maybe. Maggie and I have, over the past four years, we have written a book together. The series is called Tales of Thrum, and the first book is The Terrible Discord. It is our attempt to create a whole new musical world, kind of like a Harry Potter adventure, but it is all based in a world where music is magic. Hopefully create a space where a community can build. It's where you really dress up. about, again, encouraging participation. Yep. This yep. isn't something that you just consume. People can become involved and participate yep. in so many different different ways as well. So that's the dream. We don't mm -hmm. know how we'll get there. We we definitely need help from people like you and, and the communities around. We have this little vision the spark. spark, but I think it needs the audience. Well, guys, you've certainly lit that spark somewhere else before. It's been an absolute honor having you guys on today. Are you guys ready to say the final words? Happy monstering. Okay, sure. Okay, sure. Happy, Happy monstering. monstering.